really the key is is just knowing the the rules of the game, the different insurance companies and the limits that they offer with term conversions. Yeah. Because where it can be upsetting for a client and even an agent, because this is the kind of stuff that you can overlook so easily. And then you find out after the fact, like, why did no one tell me? They're like, well, we don't tell you, you have to read it. I'm like, <laughs> okay. But if you find out after the fact, like you showed someone probably a maximized cash value design, now you're going to convert the term policy. The insurance company tells you, you can't do it that way. Now you go and show the client a design that has a higher base premium, where maybe you've educated them already on how to keep the base premium low to maximize the cash value. They're going to think that you're doing something to take advantage of the situation. Right. And, like, and the, the client's kind of like in a tough situation now because yeah. they've already been qualified for a million dollars of death benefit. So wouldn't it, would it be more difficult to get another policy, another life insurance policy, say whole life for another million dollars to get that lower base premium? Or would I have to uh, uh, cancel the convertible term? in order to qualify for more death benefit? Good, good question. So you can apply first to see if you'd be approved for the new policy. That's exactly what I would do if I haven't had any health changes or health issues. Mm -hmm. If I can just go through underwriting and get a new policy, if I'm approved, I would do that. Then I would drop the, the uh, term policy after I'm approved, just in case. Um, so you could do that. Now, if you tried to, do, to go through underwriting again and you were denied because of a health issue now, that is where the convertible term is very, very nice to have. And now it's, well, okay, now it's more valuable, the convertible right. term. Right. Regardless of what the base premium ends up having to be. It's like, I get to keep this death benefit that I was once approved for 10 years ago, five years ago, um, yeah. and I'm willing to pay for that. So, so in certain situations, that's where a convertible term becomes extremely valuable. Someone's health changes along the way. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're not able to quite qualify for what we what we wanted, um, but best case scenario is, is this. And would you argue that a convertible term would make sense at a pen more than a mass? Or so yes, because of the design limitations, like you can definitely make that argument. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm always leaning toward the major mutuals just because that solid, consistent proof of performance. Meaning, when people put money into a whole life insurance policy, where cash value is the goal. Like we've gotten the consistency, meaning here's policies from the 1970s, 80s, 90s issued in 2000 and what has actually happened. And it's been attractive, not just an illustration that looks good, but it's like the proof isn't there. And that's the big, big problem in the life insurance industry, in my opinion, over promise and under deliver. So that's why I like well-designed policies with the major mutuals. The proof is there and I've got the confidence that the client's money is safe and it also protects my company's reputation because if you put someone in a product, you know where I'm going, where it under delivers, they're going to be upset with you. Like you increase those chances and I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing that. Um,